Hey dudes, what's up man? This is Trent. I've been painting a long time and I've been teaching a long time too. So I wanted to summarize my uh, top tips to bring your art to the next level. This is with landscapes or characters or anything that you paint really. They're gonna shave time off of your schedule. You could do a lot more, a lot faster. And also this is gonna help you if you're intermediate to beginner even, uh, because it's gonna teach you a little bit about how to extrapolate based on something that you do really like. So you can learn any art style this way. It's not just limited to this kind of stylized art style. So uh, the next level tip number one is to always use good reference. So some of these photos actually came from a place called Sedona, Arizona. And uh, I, I visited there just on like a really kind of a cool little summer spiritual journey that I was going on, try to figure out what my next project was gonna be. It was very relaxing. And then I was looking up photos because I was like, wow, this is like high desert. It's very interesting. All these red rocks everywhere. These are not my vacation photos. These are reference photos. And every opportunity that you can fill your life with experiences. So that's the thing I'm gonna recommend is find great reference material. In this case, I mean, it was a bit of a, a, a journey. I mean, I've looked up a lot of uh, different weather in that region. I started to wonder, yeah, like, does it snow here? Yeah, it does actually. And it's quite beautiful. So that's what you're looking at. And I was looking at a lot of the sky. The desert sky is kind of a unique thing. So I pulled up my uh, sheet of skies. I actually have like a component sheet full of skies and I pulled from my reference and I tried to study the lighting and tried to study the colors and, and how it's all composed. I included several different times of day and sky conditions. And by the time I'm done with this workshop, I'll probably have 20 to 30 different skies that I can pull up with different cloud patterns at different times of day. And that's gonna save me a lot of time because I, I, as a concept artist, I wanna focus on building structures and points of interest and telling a little bit more story in the environment. I don't wanna to have to keep painting skies and clouds all the time. I mean, that could be two thirds of your painting is the sky. So if you have a whole bunch of those already done, then you're two thirds done before you even begin. Another thing I wanna mention is that you should compose your piece before you go and put too much time into any one particular part. So for instance, just even doing a rough sketch, learning basic uh, compositional skills will really help you with this. You wanna make sure you avoid tangents and make sure that your piece has a good flow. This would be where you're kind of planning out your point of interest. Where do you want the viewer to look? And yeah, you could use the rule of two thirds and, and dig deeper into every one of these, including composition. I mean, every one of these is a four to five hour video on its own. So I'm really summarizing here. But I wanted to mention it because a lot of times people just skip right past the planning stage. They jump right into making the really awesome looking mountain and then they don't realize how it all fit together. Basically, the more time you spend planning out your piece, the less you're gonna fuddle around and mess up and waste a bunch of time later because then you won't put a bunch of rendering into something that you end up cutting. And that kind of ties into the next tip, which is to build a sheet of components. And you might be like, well, what do I put into my components sheet? Is there something that you're painting over and over and over? Like, are you painting rocks over and over? Are you painting uh, the same kind of trees over and over and over? Is every day just like, you know, three hours of your painting process is just painting more rocks? Like maybe you could build a component sheet that is just rocks, you know, uh, different types of rocks. Really dig into creating studies from those photographs, from your own life experiences, from even your own vacation photos. And this is not dissimilar to how photo bashing artists will just create uh, you know, a library of you know, mountains or trees or whatever, and then they photo bash them into their paintings. But you know, because we're doing for a little bit more of a stylized thing, and, you know, I, I wanna use my own artwork. So that's what this tip is about. Photo bash your own art, your own renders, your own trees, your own rocks, your own skies, and build that library out so that you have these as resources. And then you can jam out four environment paintings a day. Or just, you know, your your rocks and trees and sky, which is three fourths of most of your environment paintings, that part will only take you 20 or 30 minutes. And then that way you get to spend more time on the fun part, which is like designing the castle that's on that on that rock cliff or designing the, the old farm, you know, whatever it is that your client's asking for or that you need for your, your project, for your painting. Man, that's a time saver. And it's one that I started doing back in my Diablo three days. But the beauty of this is that it doesn't have to just be with environments. I mean, if you find that you're painting the same kind of buckles or the same kind of armor, the same type of materials on your character, you can just build a components list of 
parts and then composite them. And when you do find great reference material, extrapolate on what you found. So in some cases, what I'll do is I'll just cut out like a square inch. And I actually call this my square inch study method. And what I do is I'll take just a square inch. And in some cases, it'll just be something like a boulder or a rock. And I will paint exactly what I see from that photo or I'll paint over that material exactly as it is. Anything to commit the kind of material and texturing to my brain to simulate that and expand on it using the brushes that I have. And then what I'll do is I'll try to expand on that so that I'm, I can make like a wall out of that same rock material. And the same thing could be done with dirt or mud or uh, a big stone boulder wall or a mountain in the distance. So paint one mountain exactly as you're seeing it from the reference material and literally right next to that, right beside that, even connected to it, expand it to have another mountain right next to it that's not from the reference. Throw out that reference, get rid of that reference at that point, and this is the test to see if you've actually committed any new information to your memory. But it's using the same logic of construction and lighting so that you're just expanding on your visual vocabulary. And the whole point of growing as an artist, the whole, like, the whole lesson that you should be getting from doing studies is to expand your visual vocabulary. If you ever don't know what to paint, then build onto your components sheet and just do studies and then expand on those studies. This is what people mean when they say practice more. Really, this is what they mean. This is a literal interpretation of what they mean. Uh, doing studies, you will develop your observational skills and your ability to understand how to use the tools. The next tip is to ask yourself if there are custom brushes that you should be creating to do this process. For instance, in this case, uh, if you've watched some of my recent videos, you've seen my grass blades brush, you've seen a couple of techniques on how to create bushes in a matter of one or two brush strokes. Creating a custom brush can end up saving you hours and hours of time. As a digital artist, I feel like it's so important that you're constantly asking yourself, is this a redundant process? Am I doing this over and over? Am I wasting too much time? Am I spending 20 hours rendering grass blades when I could have just done that with two brush strokes? Hey man, I call this video next level art tips for a reason, man. This ain't beginner level tips, uh-uh. And it's easy to fall back on the thing that you know works, you know, the old way. So I'm just trying to encourage you to ask if you can work more efficiently so that you can spend more time working on the craft, the creative part of concept art. For a long time, I was very resistant to reevaluating my process. I guess I thought it would slow me down and it was I would just go into like a Zen state to just render, you know, and, and get lost in it. And that's not a bad thing. But I suppose it was maybe when I started programming that I began to realize like, you know, why put in, you know, all this time painting every grass blade if I could just create a brush? It takes 20 or 30 minutes and that's an investment of time up front but it's gonna make the rest of the process easier. And that's really what this whole video is about if you look at it. Everything that I've talked about is about good planning. It's about preparedness. It's about being able to flow and not getting stuck before you put too much time into something or getting burned out or frustrated and unable to identify what the problem is. Even the lessons that you learn should be built around preparing yourself for the challenges ahead of you. For example, if you know that you wanna get into doing character design work, then you should be studying anatomy and posing and doing life drawing, creating resources, creating shortcuts, planning to use which tools are gonna to help you to do that more efficiently. Do you wanna to need to work off of, you know, pre-existing 3D models? Do you need to build templates? Do you need to build custom brushes to be able to do that? Get all that set up before you get the job. You won't get the job until you're already good at it anyway, so just get started on it now. Build your own curriculum. And if you need a little help, guess what, dudes? That's what I'm here for. That's why I've built these long real-time video workshops, such as my landscape workshop. And yeah, you know, I get a lot of hate for teaching people how to paint faster, more efficiently. I get a lot of uh, grief for that because uh, the purest artists will say, oh, no, you're not doing real art. But guess what? I'm getting jobs. My students are getting jobs. I've, I've got tons and tons of letters I'm getting all the time from people saying, hey, your workshops have really helped me to get work. So I'm fulfilling my dream as a professional artist. And the hater is going to hate, man. And that's just because you're getting the jobs and they need a month to do even one landscape. And they'll argue with the client over that's how long it should take them. <laughs> Now, if you're a hobbyist, yeah, sure, take as long as you want, but you know, you gotta always still be thinking this way because once you start making this into your job, uh, if you tell your boss you're gonna take as long as it takes to make a good painting, 
well, they're just gonna find somebody else. Sorry, that's been my reality. Uh, and some of this can be stressful. So I will emphasize, I wanna really emphasize, this should be a fun exploration for you. It shouldn't feel like, oh my God, I have to learn so much. It should feel like, wow, there is so much to learn. And that happens from your perspective. I can't change your perspective, only you can do that. Imagine how boring and bland and uninteresting art would be if you could just learn everything you needed to know about it in one weekend of really diligent hard work. Or if you never really had to challenge yourself to learn to work faster, more efficiently, or better. That would be a pretty lame career, not worth sticking to for your whole life. So probably the most important next level art tip is to always face new challenges, always find new challenges and embrace them. Change your perception. If you're afraid of challenges, change your perception to embrace challenges. And then people will start coming to you and asking you, how did you even do that? Well, there was this YouTube guy, Trent, and he, uh, he told me I was capable of more than I thought I could uh, ever do with art. And uh, now look at me. Actually, you'll probably always be pretty humble if you listen to me. Anyway, I have a million uh, tips and more detailed tips, such as like how to use individual tools to accelerate your workflow and improve your studies. So don't forget to subscribe. I'm here every week. And of course, if you want a lot more handholdy, real-time video breakdown, I'm not just talking like a real-time video. I'm talking like I give you the ex explanation of how and why I'm using every brush and, and every technique in my landscape workshop. This is my newest workshop. So go and check that out if you're really serious about digital art. Right now I'm running my hot winter sale. That's right, at the end of the year sale. So everything is 30% off if you use the code on the screen above right now. A portion of the profits do still go to the ASPCA. That don't stop. I wanna make sure that those pups aren't there out there on the streets. My dog is a rescue, so this, this charity means a lot to me. And dudes, I wanna thank you so much for stopping by. It's always a pleasure. Seriously, you know, it's it's been a really crazy year. And for those of you who stick by my channel, I wanna make sure, I'm not giving you the fluff. I'm not giving you the clickbaity titles. I mean, I do that a little bit just to expand the channel, but uh, you coming by, you're, you're getting something a little bit more than what most YouTube channels are gonna give you. So uh, I do appreciate when you share it around and when you leave a comment and it, when you leave a little like on there, it's actually very appreciated. Uh, all right, dudes, that's it for me on this one. I'll see you in the next video, ciao.